Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today, guys, we are reading chapter 18 of Racing in the Rain. I haven't uploaded, guys, in a long time, because I had basketball practice. I didn't upload in one week, guys. Sorry of that, because I had basketball practice. A.K.A. Bra ba basketball camp at Landmark, my school. And guys, let's get started into chapter 18 of Racing in the Rain. And 19. Chapter 18. It was hours before Denny returns, and he returned alone. He, he let me out, and I could barely scramble from the seat before unleashing a torrent of orine. On the lamppost in front of me. Sorry, boy, he said. I didn't forget about you when I had finished. He opened a package of peanut butter sandwich crackers. He j must have gotten from the vending, um, vending machine. I love those crackers the best. It's the salt, the butter in the crackers mixed the fat in the peanuts. I tried to eat slowly, savoring each bite but i was too hungry and swallowed them so quickly i barely got to taste them what a shame to waste something so wonderful on a dog sometimes i hate what i am so much he sat by the parking lot for quite a long time not speaking or anything he seemed upset and when he was upset i knew the best thing i could do was be available for him so i lay next to him and waited jenny and i sat at length and watched the people coming and going from the parking lot we did nothing more than breathe it breathe from the park more than breathe from the parking lot we did nothing more than breathe we did not need conversation to communicate with each with each other after a while a car pulled into the parking lot and parked near us it was beautiful alpha Rome romeo in mint condition mike got out slowly and walked toward us i greeted him and he gave me a perfunctional punk perf functory pat on the head he continued over to denny and sat down in the stop in the spot on the bench i appreciate this mike denny said hey man no problem said mike what about zoe eve's dad eve's dad took her to their house to put her to bed replied denny oh that's so sad Mike nodded. The crickets were louder than traffic from the nearby Interstate 405, but not my, but not by much. We listened to them. A con concert of crickets, crickets, wind, leaves, cars, and fans on the roof of the hospital building. Here's why I will be a good person because I listen. I cannot speak. So I listen very well. I never interrupt. I never change the course of I never change the course of the conversation with a comment of my own. People if you pay attention to them, change the direction of one other's conversations constantly. It's like having a passenger in your car who suddenly grabs the steering wheel. And turns you down a side street. Learn to listen. I beg of you. Pretend you are a dog like me. And listen to other people rather than steal their stories. I listened the night and I heard. How long will they keep Eve? Mike said. They might not do, not even do a test. Said Denny. Still might just go in and take it out. Cancer or not. It's still causing problems, the headaches, the nausea, and the mood swings. Sorry, Mike said. I'm sorry. He grabbed me by the scruff, gave me a shake, 
really rough. He said, I'll be freaking out right now. If if I were you, Denny stood up tall for him. He wasn't a tall guy. He was a Formula One. Well, well proportioned and powerful, but scaled, scaled or scaled down a fly weight. I am freaking out, he said. Mike nodded thoughtfully. You don't look... You don't look it. I guess that's why you're such a good driver, he said. And I looked at him quickly. That was just what I was thinking. You didn't mind stopping by my place and getting his stuff. Denny took out his key ring, picked through the bundle, the food, and the pantry, gave him a cup in, in half. He gets three of those chicken cookies before he goes to bed. Take his bed. It's in the bedroom. And take his dog. Just say, where's your dog? And he'll find it. Sometimes he hides it. He found the house key and held it for Mike. Let the other keys dangle. It's just the same for both locks. He said, we'll be fine, Mike said. Do you want me to bring you some clothes? No, Denny said. I'll go back into the morning, pack a bag. If we're staying, no words than just crickets. Wind, traffic, traffic, fans blowing on the roofs of distant siren. You don't have to keep it inside, Mike said. You can't, you can let it, let, you can let go. We're in a parking lot. Jenny looked up at Mike. This is why she didn't want to go to the hospital. What? Mike asked. This is what she was afraid of, said Denny. Mike nodded, but clearly he didn't understand what Denny was saying. What about your next, next, what about your next, your race next week, he asked. I'll call Johnny tomorrow and tell him I'm out of here. For the, I'm out for the season, Denny said. I have to be here. Mike took me to our house to get my things. I was hu- humiliated when he said, Where's your dog? I didn't want to admit that. I was, I still slept with a stuffed animal, but I did. I loved that dog, and Denny was right. <clears throat> I did hide it during the day because I didn't want Zoe to add it to her collection. And also, I was afraid of that, um, of the virus that had possessed the zebra. But I got my dog out of its hiding spot under the sofa, and we climbed back into Mike's alpha and went to his house. He, His partner asked how it all went, and Mike brushed him off right away and poured himself a drink. That guy is bottled so tight. Mike said he's going to have a heart attack or something. Mike's partner, Tony, picked up my dog that I had dropped on the floor. We have to take this too, he asked. Listen, Mike said, everyone needs a security blanket. What's wrong with that? It stinks, Mike. Par- Mike's partner said. I'll wash it. And he put it in the washing machine. My dog, he took the first toy that Jenny ever gave to me and stuck it into the washing machine with soap. I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. No one had ever handled my dog in such a way. I watched through the glass window of the machine. It spun around and around, sloshing with the suds. And they laughed at me, not meanly. They thought it I was a dumb dog. All people do. They laughed, and I watched. And when it came out, they put it in the dryer with a towel. And I waited. And when it was dry, they took it out and gave it to me. Tony took it out, It w- and it was warm. And he handed it to me and said, Much better, right? Then Tony handed me my dog. I took it in my mouth out of respect. I took it to my bed because that's what Denny would have wanted me to do. And I curled up with it. And the funny part, I liked it. I 
I liked my stuffed dog better clean than smelly, which was something I never would have imagined, but which was something I never would have imagined, but which gave me something I could hold on to, a belief that the center of our family could not be changed by a chance or a concurrence, an accidental washing, an unexpected illness deep in the, the center of our family existed a bond denny zoe eve me and even my stuffed dog however things might change around us we would always be together chapter 19 i was not always included being a dog i was not conversation i was I was not allowed into the hospital to hear the hushed conversations, to witness the doctor, which the blue hat and blue gown whispering his opinions, and misgiving revealing the clues they all should have seen, explaining my mi the miser mysteries of the brain. No one confided in me. I was never cons consulted. Nothing was expected of me except that I do my business outside when called upon to do so, and that I stopped barking when told to stop barking. Eve stayed in the hospital for a long time, weeks b because there was so much for Denny to do, caring for, m for both me and Zoe, as well as visiting Eve in the hospital whenever possible. He decided the best plan was start living by a system rather than our unusual spot spontaneous ways of living at the end of the work day denny retrieved zoe from camp and returned home to cook dinner while zoe watched cartoons after dinner denny gave me food me my food and then then gave me my food then, oh my god, gave me my food, and then took Zoe to visit Eve. Later, then they returned. Denny bathed Zoe, read her a story, and tucked her into bed. Weekends were spent largely at the hospital. It was not a very colorful way to live. My walks were infrequent, my trips to the dog park non-existent, little attention was paid by me, by Denny or Zoe, but I was ready to make that sacrifice in the interest of Eve's well-being. I, vow, I vowed, vowed, I, I don't know, I vowed not to be a squeaky wheel in any ways in any way after two weeks of of this pattern maxwell and trish and trish offered to keep zoe for a weekend so as to give denny a bit of break they told him me he looked sick sickly that he should take a vacation from his troubles, and Eve agreed. I don't want to see you this weekend, she said to him. At least that's what he told Zoe and me. Denny had mixed feelings about the idea. I could tell as he packed Zoe's overnight bag, overnight bag, he was hesitant to let Zoe go, but he did let her go, and then he and I were alone and it felt very strange. We did all the things we used to do. We went jogging, we ordered delivery pizza for lunch. We spent the afternoon watching a fantastic racing movie. After that, Denny took me to the Blue Dog Park that was a few blocks away, and he threw the ball for me. But even for that venture, our energy was wrong, a vicious dog got after me, and he was at my throat with bare teeth everywhere I moved. I couldn't retrieve the tennis ball. 
but was forced to stay close by Denny's side. It all felt wrong. The absence of Eve and Zoe was wrong. There was something missing in everything we did. After we had both eaten dinner, we sat together in the kitchen, fidgeting. There was nothing for us to do but fidget. Because while we were going through the motions, doing what we always used to do, there was no joy in whatever, whatsoever. Finally, Denny stood. He took me outside, and I urinated for him. He gave me my usual bedtime cookies, and he, and then he said to me, You be good, he said. I have to go see her. I followed him to the door. I wanted to go see her too. No, he said to me, you stay here. They won't let you into the hospital. I understood. I went to my bed and lay down. Thanks, Enzo, he said. And then he left. He returned a few hours later in the darkness and he silently climbed onto his bed with a shiver before the sheets got warm. I lifted my head, and he, he saw me. She's going to be okay, he said to me. She's going to be okay. Yeah. Chapter 20. Zoe and me playing in the backyard on a sunny afternoon. She made me wear the bumblebee wings she had worn the previous Halloween. She dressed herself in a pink ballet outfit with the puffy skirt and the leotard and tights. We went out into the backyard and ran around together until her pink feet were stained with dirt. It was the Tuesday after her weekend with Maxwell and Trish. And by then, she had thankfully lost the sour vinegar smell that clung to her whenever she spent time with the twins' house. Denny had left work early and picked up Zoe so they could go shopping for new sneakers and socks. When they got home, Denny cleaned the house while Zoe and I played. We danced and laughed and ran and pretended we were angels. She called me over to the corner of the yard by the spidget, the spidget on the wood chips. Lay one of her Barbie dolls. She kneeled down before it. You are going to be okay, she said to the doll. Everything is going to be okay. He unfolded a dishcloth, and she brought from the house in the dishcloth were scissors, a sharpie pen. The house, the house and the dishcloth were scissors, a sharpie pen, and a masking tape. She pulled off the doll's head. She, she took the kitchen scissors and cut the Barbie's hair. Down to the plastic nub, she threw a line on the doll's skull. She, all the while whispering softly, everything's going to be okay. When she was done, she tore off a piece of masking tape and put it over the doll's head. She pressed the back onto the next stub and laid the doll down. We, we both stared at it, a moment of silence. Now she can go to heaven zoe said to me and i'll live with grandma and grandpa i was sad clearly and weekend the rest of maxwell and trish and offer had offered denny was a false one i had no clear evidence and yet i could sense it for the twins it had been a working weekend on the effort to establish a plot they were already sowing the seeds of their story, spinning their lies for for telling a future they hoped would come true. Chapter 21 Soon Labor Day weekend came, and after that, Zoe was enrolled in school, real school, as she called it kindergarten, and she was so excited to go. She picked out her clothes the night before the first day, well bottom jeans and sneakers and sneakers and a bright yellow blouse. She had her backpack for a lunchbox, her pencil case, her notebook, 
With great ceremony, Denny and Di walked with her a block from her house to her corner of Mar- Martha Luther King Jr. Way. And we waited for the bus that would take her to her new elementary school. We waited with a few other kids and parents from the neighborhood. When the bus came over the hill, we were so excited. Kiss me now, she said to Denny. Now, he replied, not when the bus is here. I don't want Jesse to see. Jesse was her best friend from preschool. Preschool, who was going to be in the same kindergarten class, Denny obliged and kissed her before the bus had stopped. After school, you go to extend the day, he said, like we practiced yesterday at orientation. Remember? Remember? Daddy, she scolded. Denny said, I'll pick you up after extended day. You wait in the classroom, and I'll come and get you. Daddy! She made a stern face at him, and for a second, I could have sworn she was Eve. The flashing eyes, the flared nostrils, the head cocked, ready for battle. She quickly turned and climbed onto the bus. Then she, then as she walked down the aisle, she turned and waved at us both both before she took her seat next to her friend. The bus pulled away and headed for a school. You're first, another father asked Denny. Yeah, Denny replied. My only you. My third, the man said. But there's nothing like your first. They grow up so fast. They, that they do. Denny said with a smile. We turned and walked home. So guys, I hope you enjoyed those four chapters. Chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, chapter 1. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this, these four chapters. And guys, I hope you're enjoying your summer. And you're and enjoying. And guys, I hope you're enjoying your day and this book too. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment all down below. And guys, see you next time. Bye. See you next time.